good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to first say uh, thank you for the invitation to come here. Uh, it's a great privilege and honor to be coming to this part of the world. And for me, it's a special uh, opportunity to talk about evidence-based medicine and acupuncture. Uh, I, my, my background, just briefly, is um, I, I did a PhD in mathematics, um, studying the mathematics of water waves. That seems like a long time ago. And by a circuitous route, uh, I took up acupuncture, uh, trained in acupuncture, and I've been practicing as an acupuncturist for uh, 33 years now. So I think of myself as an old hand uh, in, in the business. I took up research as a hobby, which might seem a bit strange, but uh, when I started my research, there was no funding, and I started my first, uh, my first study had four patients, my next study had 20 patients and so forth, and then research became more than a hobby. I became a job at the University of York, and uh, I've been there about 15 years doing the research, that I'm, some of which I'll talk about now. So, this is, th my talk is going to cover three, three topics. Uh, first, I'm going to look at the work of the acupuncture trialist collaboration, which is the, I think, the most exciting project looking at acupuncture for chronic pain. Uh, then I'm going to look at the long-term effects of acupuncture for chronic pain, and then look at some explanations for, for why we get long-term effects. So just starting with the trialist collaboration, this is a group of about 30 trialists that came together to study the evidence base from high quality trials looking at these major conditions of osteoarthritis, of headache and migraine, and of low back and neck pain. This is the area that as acupuncturists we see the most patients. It's also the area where there is the most evidence. So the trialist collaboration said right, let's put together in one database all the high quality trials and do some high level statistical analysis. And so we ended up with 29 trials and 18,000 patients. This is a very powerful uh, study because of the size, the bigger the size, the more power you have to find differences. And we, we had three aims. One was to address the question, is acupuncture better than sham acupuncture. You know, the, some critics say, well, isn't acupuncture all a placebo? Well, the data from this study is the most definitive data uh, on, on that question. Second, you know, what's the effect of acupuncture um, against usual care? And that's like standard care or a waiting list and so forth. And third, we also look at the long-term effects which brought some very surprising results, unexpected results. So I'm going to give you just the, the, the headline results of this study. And I'm going to give you some data. So I know this data is really important because it helps us understand the size of the effect of acupuncture. And I'm going to talk about effect sizes. So think of an effect size as um, you know, if it's, if it's a large effect size, it's 0.8. If it's a moderate effect size, it's about 0.5. And if it's a small effect, under 0.3. And it's a standardized effect. It's, you can compare acupuncture across other interventions for the same condition, or you can compare um, different conditions um, with the same intervention. So it's like a standardized unit. What we find is, acupuncture outperforms usual care by an effect size of 0.5. That's a decent effect. You know, usual care, as I said, is standard care or wait list and so forth. It's a decent sized effect, especially in a chronic pain population where there might be multi-morbidities and, and so forth. When you compare acupuncture to sham acupuncture, the effect size is very small. It's an effect size of 0.2. That's considered um, by some people to be so small, it's not worth having. But of course, think about it, it's an artificial difference between acupuncture and sham. And ironically, if you look at um, mainstream conventional medical interventions, 
say NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs against placebo, they have an effect size of about 0.2 as well. So these small effects we get um, are a source of criticism for acupuncture, but also when you re look at it versus uh, other interventions against placebo, acupuncture is fairly similar. So this 0.5 and 0.2, that leaves the difference here uh, the effect size of sham versus usual care, usual care has an effect size of 0.3. That's also statistically significant. So sham acupuncture is very powerful. And it's probably activating physiological processes that are very similar to acupuncture or um, are acupuncture-like physiological activity. And sham acupuncture is, you think about it, it's either, usually it's the, the wrong points are being used or the right points of view are being used, but with a sham needle that doesn't actually penetrate the skin, but looks like it. We call it, um, in my country, a, the stage dagger type needle, where it looks like it penetrates the skin, but doesn't. So let's look at these, these figures, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, and represent them in a graph. So if you see, if you see here the 60%, is the point three is the sham versus usual care. The 40% extra is the bit, the point two that you get is on top of the point three. The, the point two is when you do real acupuncture, you get uh, the total overall effect of 0.5. So some critics say, well, you might as well do sham acupuncture. But that's, if you, only, if you do sham acupuncture, you only get point three. True acupuncture, you get a 0.5 effect. So if anyone ever says to you, well, acupuncture is all a placebo, isn't it? You'll say no. You get an extra 40% benefit with real acupuncture, and you're never gonna want anyone to have sham acupuncture instead. And these, these are all high quality trials, and uh, our publication, you know, which uh, we, pub we published this in 2012, basically say, it says this result is beyond bias. It's not a, it's an, uh, it's a, a true effect that acupuncture outperforms sham. So what we said was our final statement was significant differences between true and sham acupuncture indicate that acupuncture is more than a placebo and it's a result that can be distinguished from bias. So this paper can be downloaded, it's open access, and it's the, the, the very best article to address the placebo question. But there's one important implication for this study, for research, which is a slight digression, if you'll forgive me. But if you have, if you're looking for a small effect sizes, you need bigger trials. And I'll just give you as an example. If you're looking for a 0.5 effect, you need at least 170 people in your trial. And if you're looking for a, a small effect, like, effect size like 0.3, you need nearly 500 people in your trial. So what size of effect would you be looking for uh, between acupuncture and sham, say 0.2? For 0.2, if you're looking for that size of effect, you need 1,000 people in your trial. So this, this means basically what, you, what we've got is most trials, acupuncture trials, are underpowered. And that explains why we have so many inconsistent results from systematic reviews. This was, this was something that got me started when I started doing research was to try and understand why there's such mixed results. I get good results in my clinic, I look at the literature and there's mixed results. The main reason is the trials are generally too small, especially when we're looking for that comparison between acupuncture and sham. None of the trials in our trialist collaboration had a thousand patients. Only by collating all that data into a big database could we show statistically significant differences. So, moving on, one other thing we did with the collaboration was we looked at the long-term effects across these 29 trials. And this was probably one of the most unexpected results from our, our analysis, because most interventions wear off after time. You take a drug, you have, it has an effect, over time it wears off, and so forth. 
What we're finding with acupuncture across these high quality trials, looking over the longer term, is we have sustained benefits. Actually, by 12 months after treatment, only 10% of the benefit is lost. Now, isn't that rather an, an extraordinary result? This is for chronic pain. We don't know about other conditions, but for chronic pain, most of the benefit is sustained. So, uh, I want to just talk about where that data is coming from, because this is, here we're looking at acupuncture versus usual care. Now, this is the real world context where we're comparing acupuncture to a wait list, to standard care, to usual care, to uh, other int active interventions and so forth. So it, it's up against you know, some quite sus substantial competition here. Um, and I want to move on to my second point about pragmatic randomized trials. A pragmatic trial is like a real world trial where we do make these usual care com comparisons. And in the UK, uh, I've been involved in, out of these five trials, I've been closely involved with four of them. And you can see from the trials, they're all quite large numbers. They're all larger than that size of 170 patients to show an effect size of 0.5, so they're powerful enough. And the dates, they're all conducted in the, over the last 10 or, or 10 or so years. First up, I'm gonna talk about the the chronic headache um, and migraine trial. So this was one done by Andrew Vickers. And what you'll see from the graph is uh, a lowering of the headache rate. There's a headache measure on the left-hand side, and there's a control group, which is, which is the top line, and that's the usual care line, and the lower line is the acupuncture line. And so th this was physical therapists, delivering 12 acupuncture sessions, and within three months, both groups improved, but the acupuncture group could, could improve more. Then something interesting happened. The gap at 12 months grew. You see how there's a bigger gap? The gap grows from 3.9 points to 4.6. Now this is, defies the odds. You know, most interventions wear off, but this acupuncture in this, for headache and migraine, is delivering a longer term benefit. I can show you some more studies. Um, this is the back pain study that I helped set up in New York. The scale is, is reversed, so going up is improving. The scale on the left is the, is the short form 30, 36, the bodily pain scale, so this is a pain measure that goes from zero to 100. 100 is no pain at all. So notice, the thing to notice here is that both arms of the trial improved dramatically in the first three months. So why is that? It's because patients consult their acupuncturist in a bad patch, okay? It's if, if, if you have an episodic condition like back pain, you consult in a bad patch, so the trend is gonna be up. Now this, is, this was a really unexpected result for me because when I treat my patients with back pain, they mostly get better. I mostly think it's my acupuncture. Actually, when, I, when we finished this study, I realized actually mostly patients get better because they have consulted you in a bad patch and patients tend to get better anyway. So what the challenge is, is to show that acupuncture adds something else extra. So you can see in this study we have a a five point difference at three months, this is after 10 acupuncture sessions. That five point difference, that's the difference between acupuncture and usual care at that point. That's what I was talking about, that effect size before, the 0.5, it's that sort of size. Then something interesting happened again. What we saw was a growing difference between the arms. So the acupuncture was delivered in the first three months, the 10 sessions. The patients kept getting better. At, at 12 months, the gap had gone from five to six points. And then at 24 months, the gap had grown again. So we have a, an eight point difference. Isn't that unusual to see that sort of long-term effect? I'll just quickly roll through a couple of more trials we did in New York. This is a, an irritable bowel study. 
um, acupuncture for IBS. Um, here we, again, we followed the patients up for 24, 24 months. And you can see again, the initial improvement, this was after 10 sessions of acupuncture. The left-hand scale is the IBS scale. And the continuing benefit, the difference between groups, is pretty much sustained through to 12 months. Sorry, to 24 months. The gastroenterologist on our team said, I've never seen any intervention deliver long-term benefits like this. And then, finally, uh, just uh, depression. You know, uh, I know I'm talking about chronic pain. Half the people with depression have chronic pain. It's a big part of a big comorbidity. And we had, we had a three-arm trial here. We compared acupuncture versus counseling versus usual care. Again, you can see the benefit. The top line, the gray line, is the standard care. The middle line is the counseling. And the purple line at the bottom is the acupuncture. Again, long-term benefits through to 12 months. And that was after 12 sessions of acupuncture. So, putting all those together, we've got a case that these pragmatic trials, not the sham control trials, the pragmatic real-world trials are delivering long-term benefits um, when the, either for chronic pain conditions or conditions for, in which pain is a significant component. And the, the important thing, I think, to think about, the question really is being raised, is why, how come we're getting these long-term benefits?